This program is made possible by the partners and friends of Bob Yandian Ministries. Coming up on this episode of Student of the Word. Another term for works is witnessing. We witness not only by the words of our mouth, but by the deeds we have. Whatever you do in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father by Him. So what's God left us in this earth to do? Deeds. And these deeds are also called acts. That's the purpose of the book of Acts. But what's another word for it? Good works. God has left us in this word, world for good works. What's the purpose of good works? Just like God created the universe to talk about Jesus, just like Jesus came and healed people to show people about Jesus as Lord and Savior, we produce good works for the same reason. For more than 40 years, Bob Yandian has been an expositor of the Bible, making seemingly complicated doctrine easy to understand. Grab your Bible and something to take notes with and study the Word of God with Pastor Bob Yandian. Hello and welcome again to Student of the Word with Pastor Bob Yandian. So glad to have you here with us today. We began a series yesterday and that's called Grace and Good Works and the how that good works works together with our grace. And we got into yesterday talking about the difference between works before salvation and works after salvation. Works before you get saved are of no value to God because you do not have the Holy Spirit living in you. But once you are born again, the Holy Spirit does come to live in you. Turning your life over to the control of the Holy Spirit is all part of growth. And when you do that, now you can produce works that are pleasing to God. And literally works are part of the Christian life after we're born again, not to please God, no, not to try to make God love us more and all that. He can't love us more. He loves us his maximum amount. But we are to use those works to help win the world over to the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is pleasing to God. Without good works, you cannot please God. Not that you can't get him to love you. He loves you already. But there's a pleasure that God has in you when you begin to produce good works. And this is what God said over his son, who for 30 years studied God's word was then baptized in the River Jordan. The Holy Spirit came on him and God said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. He didn't say I love him more because God can't love you more. God couldn't love Jesus more. He was pleased with his lifestyle. And then a few years later on the Mount of Transfiguration, God said the same thing in front of uh, Peter, James, and John to the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, "He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, hear ye him. And so he was commanding them to listen to Jesus, not to Peter's ranting and raving and carrying on about how they need to build three tents there on the mountain and move into it and stay there forever. So God was simply emphasizing that. But the Bible tells us that without good works, we cannot please the Lord. And so there's a pleasure that God has in us when we do that. So again, what happens is that because of this, we come to serve the Lord Jesus Christ and God wants to be pleasured in us. He wants to look at us and say, oh, I'm so pleased with Bob, pleased with Linda, pleased with Connie, whoever you are out there, that God wants to be pleased with you. And so we have a series we're going to be offering called Grace for Growth, and that'll come here at the halftime. And I want everyone, if you didn't buy it yesterday, buy it today. Listen, this is a great series, and this will help you in your growth, help you to understand how that before salvation, it's Grace and grace only. That's how you get saved by faith in Jesus Christ. Works don't count. But after you're saved, now you're equipped to produce the works that God wants you to have. It's all part of the growth for the Christian life. And there'll be more information on that too. And again, to my partners, thank you. You guys are a great blessing. I couldn't do this without you. I know I say it, but I mean it. I can't do this without you. And whenever the offerings start to come in higher and people start to join, I keep thinking of all the new things we could do, ways we can reach out to other people. This isn't to pad my pocketbook. This isn't to, so we can buy something really nice for ourselves. I mean, I'm not out to buy some you know, nice ring or watch or anything like that. That's not what I'm out for. I am out to win people for Jesus Christ. And I'm also out to help raise up a new generation of ministers that'll understand that there's two things that don't change. The word of God, the power of the Holy Spirit. Lots of other things change in the ministry. Dress styles change, music style changes, how you paint a building, what it looks like, carpet, you know, all the different things we do. Those are things that just keep changing from generation to generation, but the word should never change. And sadly, we have churches today that are attacking the credibility of the word of God. They didn't used to do that. And the value of whether we even need the Holy Spirit in our life or need the Holy Spirit's power in our church, this is something I am out to point out. These things never change. And so if you want to stand with me in that, go to my website. And there's a place there where you can become a partner with Bob Yandy. And thank you again for joining your hand with mine. We join them together because why? Two can put 10,000 to flight. One can only put 1,000 to flight. Every partner that joins me makes us 10 times more powerful than we were before. 
Thank you for your addition into my ministry. All right, let's take a look here again, and uh, let's talk again about Christians. And so after we become born again, we need to produce good works. We pointed out Hebrews chapter 11 yesterday is an entire chapter dedicated to works. By faith, Abraham did this. By faith, Abel did this. Enoch did this. Noah did this. Moses did this. We go down the list of works, one after another, and it's simply pointing out in Hebrews chapter 11 that without good works, we cannot truly please God because we must believe that he is and and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. God left us here to diligently seek him through his word, through praying in the spirit, uh, becoming familiar with the ways of God, and then presenting it to the world. This is what God left us here for. If God does not, wa- if God did not want us to walk in good works after salvation, he would have hauled us up into heaven the moment we got saved. He left us here. In according to Act, uh, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10, he left us here to produce good works, and he equipped us unto every good work by the word of God. So the reason why we've been left here again, we cannot change the world, but we can influence the world. Now, the world cannot be changed because it's backed by the devil, and the devil won't change, so the world won't change. And if you read the Bible, you eventually know the world keeps going downhill, downhill. There's times the church can slow it down, and there's times we can stand the way and block it, But there's never a time we're going to stop the world. And we keep talking about, well, you know, we're going to gain our nation back. I believe we can have strong influence in our nation. We can see revival in our nation. But ultimately, it's going to keep on going downhill because the world cannot be changed. The world can only be destroyed. And that's what's going to happen when Jesus comes back. In the meantime, God has left me here to influence the world. I am the mud the world has to swim through to get anything done. I slow them down. They hate the church. As we point out what Eric Holder said in a speech he made in Chicago, he said, it's not Christians we hate. It's those Christians that believe the Bible and live by it. That's us. That's what we're here for. In other words, what he's saying is, I don't mind these guys that get converted to Christianity. I don't like disciples. Those who follow Jesus and everything he said, everything he did, they take the word of God, they stand on it. That's the ones we don't like. That's what the world is simply saying. And they out, they're out to destroy us. They're out to hate us. We may call ourselves a Christian. That doesn't bother them. But when we start living like it, producing good works, that's what they cannot stand. When we start laying hands on the sick, casting out devils, witnessing to other people around us, doing good works to help people get born again and to follow Jesus Christ and help raise up a generation of disciples, the world hates us. And that's why they hated Christians. You know why they called them Christians? Because they acted like Jesus himself. This was not some term where they thought, oh, Christian, what a wonderful term. No, it was a derogatory term of which the church said, we like that term. We're little Jesuses. Man, we believe what he preached. We act on what he said. We perform the same miracles, signs, and wonders. We're out to set people free. And man, governments hated them. Religions hated them. Especially Judaism hated them. And so we again see what the word Christian means. The word Christian doesn't mean a convert. The word Christian is referring to a disciple, someone who follows after the Lord Jesus Christ. So the church should be the strongest influence for God in the world and against the world. Again, we are the strongest influence for God and we are the strongest influence against the world as we stand here and live for Jesus Christ each and every day. What are good works? After we're born again, what are good works? There are good works and there are bad works. There's right and wrong uses of works. Let me get back to something. We cannot get saved by works. But here's another thing too. After salvation, if you try to come to God and win him over by your works, it's not going to work. Okay, there are two times that works are wrong. Number one is a sinner trying to get saved by your works. Number two is a Christian trying to butter up God, get on his good side. Or if you've done something wrong, trying to think, I don't need to do anything. I'll just do more good works. That is not pleasing to God. Grace begins the Christian life. Grace continues the Christian life. But grace after we are born again should produce good works backed by our understanding of God's love for us, our understanding of his sacrifice for us, our understanding of all the good gifts he's given to us and all the blessings we have in life. We should want to serve him in front of people so they can say, not only does he preach a good message, he lives it. 
That's what, again, works are for. So we, again, we have the works of Hebrews chapter 11, and we have an entire book called Works. It's the book of Acts, and all the deeds that the Christians did throughout that book, and the whole book is a book on works that Christians produce, why we are left in this earth to produce good works. You can't find one scripture on works and try to find everything else by it, and that's what's happening in many lives today. They'll say, see, the Bible says that we can't get saved by works. So works, we just throw them out because works are of no value to God. For salvation, that's true. Or for after you're born again, trying to butter up God and get him to kind of forget the bad things you've done and the sins you've done, that's not true either. So again, that's not what works are for, but works do have a divine place in God's plan and works are not to get you into heaven. Works are not to make you a child of God, but works prove you're a child of God and God will reward them in heaven. Two major things. There are the gifts that God gives and there's rewards. Gifts are not gotten by works. Gifts are received. But but uh, when God rewards, it's for things we have done. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So God does offer rewards. And rewards are what happens with all the works we have here. And we take them after we are saved. The works that we did for to get people saved, the works we did to clothe people and, and put food on, in their mouth and, and visit them in prison, and visit them in hospitals, do all these things to try to make them or to try to bring them to salvation or make disciples out of them. All those good works go to heaven with us and we will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Oh, but that's a misnomer. The Greek talks about it's the rewards seat of Christ. God's a rewarder. And when we get to heaven, there's rewards. The gift that I'll have is heaven. I get to go there and once I receive Jesus, a one-way ticket is slapped into my pocket, I'm going to heaven. But after I get there, there's rewards and that determines how I'll, I'll uh, reign in heaven with Jesus Christ, rule and reign with him, be seated with him in heavenly places, all the different things that go on there, the different brilliance and magnitude of how I stand out in heaven. No two Christians will stand out the same. No two will be rewarded exactly the same, but we'll all be there. Being there is a gift. Rewards when I get there happen because I have done good works in this earth. And again, in Revelation 14, 13, my works when I die, I will follow me into heaven. And as it says in 2 Peter chapter 1, so an entrance shall be ministered to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom. I don't want to just go to heaven. I want to have an abundant entrance. And I'll take all these good works with me of which God will reward me for in heaven. Again, gifts or works have a reward. Grace and faith only is the gift of God I reach out and receive. But once I've received that gift, God says, now I want you to take what I've given you and start to work in front of people. Grow in grace. Become a disciple of me and show the world what I have done for you. So again, you can't just find one scripture on works. Understand there's different types of works. There's wrong use of works, trying to butter up God or getting to accept you or get eternal life. That's the wrong use of works. But afterwards, works to help win the world for Jesus Christ, that's what God's looking for. And so if you sin after you become born again, which we all have, and you decide, I don't want to confess my sins. See, that's grace. To confess it without doing any works, that's grace. Like confessing Jesus as Savior to get saved, that's grace. After you're saved, when you commit a sin, to confess it to the Lord, that's grace. But after you're born again, to produce good works is what God is looking for. So God simply says, faith or works to try to get saved is wrong. And after you are saved, works to try to just get God to wink and not look at your sin and say, oh, it's all right, look how much he's working for me. That is wrong. What God wants us to do is to understand that grace uh, saves us, but also works have a very important part to play after we are born again in winning the world for Jesus Christ. Let me give you a word for works before we go to the break. Another word for works is witnessing. You are witnessing by your words and by your deeds. See you right after the break. The Beatitudes are the introduction to the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5. They are divided into two sections, being hearers and being doers of God's Word. In this seven lesson series titled Grace for Growth, Bob Yandian breaks down the Beatitudes and explains the steps to spiritual maturity. Grace for Growth is available as a seven CD series for $30 or as an MP3 download for $15. To order, visit bobyandian.com or call 918-250-2000. 
2207. Bob Yandian Ministries is training up a new generation in the Word of God. Because of your generosity and faithfulness, this teaching ministry is able to change countless lives. You will never know until you get to heaven how many people received Jesus, were filled with the Holy Spirit, healed, or found God's will for their life through your support and prayers. If you would like to schedule Bob Yandian to speak at your church, event, or conference, go to bobyandian.com forward slash invite or call 918-250-2207. Thanks for coming back. We've been having a good lesson here on the importance of works in the Christian life. And so again, for those of you that have not ordered this particular series, please do so. It's not often I come back and really push a series, but this one, Grace for Growth, is so important. You know, Brother Hagin wrote a book years and years ago, and it was simply called Growing Up Spiritually. Boy, was it necessary. Because people often, in the midst of revival, start running after the revival and looking at the great things that's going on. They get all excited to look at that, but they don't really look at any particular growth in their life. And oftentimes during revival, all we want to do is just get, 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 get from God. Oh, oh, I want that prosperity. Oh, I want that healing. All those things are important. But there comes a time where you realize I haven't been left here for me. It's not for me to tear down my barns and build bigger barns. No, it's up to me to take now the abundance of what I have and start giving it to others as a means of witnessing to them to accept Jesus Christ themselves. And what he's done for me, he can do for them. And I keep acting like I'm here superior and all this kind of stuff. I'm not superior. What Jesus did for me, did for everybody. And what's happened to me can happen to anybody. So all I need to do is share with other people what God has done for me and tell them God's no respecter of persons. He loves you the same as he loves me. So this is why this particular series is so important. So have you got it? I want you to get this. I want you to order this because why it's that important. It will help you in your Christian growth. Once you start listening to it, you're going to have to stop the CD and go, wow, and go, wow, that's that's really good. I needed to understand that. And you may come back to it 10 minutes later. You might come back to it a day later as you meditate on what God has given to you. That's the greatness of the Word of God. Let's get back to what we were talking about. Uh, you can't find one scripture again and look at it and say, this defines all work. There's good works, bad works, proper time for works, wrong time for works. Works are wrong when used to win God's love or the acclaim of people. If all you're doing is doing these things for people and then thinking, I want them to pat me on the back and tell me how great I am, that is the wrong use of works. But trying to butter up God and get something from God by your works is wrong because what God offers is grace is simply a gift. Reach out and take. It. Works are right when used as a witness to win the lost. This is the purpose of good works for the ultimate thing of winning people to the Lord Jesus Christ. When my mom and dad came to Tulsa, Oklahoma after my dad had been in the military for some time and finally was let out of the military. And they moved around the country and they finally decided they wanted to come back and settle in Enid, Oklahoma. And they ran out of gas in Tulsa, and two hours away from Enid. And so uh, they were at a store that night, broke, hard, and they, they, you know, not enough money to do much of anything. And my mom suddenly remembered, I think I've got some relatives that live in Tulsa. And she stopped to remember what was their name. She finally remembered and looked it up in a phone book. You remember phone books? She looked it up in a phone book and she called and this couple said, well, come on over and stay in our basement till you get your feet on the ground. So they did. And one night they were invited to go to a revival. And that revival, my dad didn't want to go to revival because he found out it was a church service. But my mom said, we're getting the room free. So let's go. And so they went. And the first night they went, my dad got saved. My mom got saved. My mom said my dad shook through the entire sermon. He was so under conviction when he heard the gospel. He ran to the front and gave his life to Jesus Christ. And a couple of nights later, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. You know what just opening up that, that basement did? It brought my mom and dad into an environment where people knew Jesus. And that love that was shown to them through works. Here, use our basement. Here, we'll help feed you. Brought them to the Lord Jesus Christ and now opened up the door for me to be a minister. My dad was a minister. He pastored church. Uh, both kids that they had were saved, me and my sister. I'm in the full-time ministry. Uh, my son is in the full-time ministry. He has a son that that's, wants to be in the ministry, a daughter that's going to be in praise and worship. Uh, my sister's kids all know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, married to good Christian kids. I mean, this thing's going to go on for generations all because of what one person Person did. Look at the effect. Look at all the cause and effect that comes one generation after another. And this is, again, the purpose of good works. So, again, 
Works are right when used as a witness to win the lost. What makes works right or wrong is the motive behind the works, not the works themselves. The reason why works can't save you because the motive is, is I'm going to use my good works to try to get to heaven. It won't work. Okay. The only thing God's looking for is for you just to bear yourself in front of him and says, I can't do this. I need Jesus. And you accept him as your savior. After salvation, what's the motive behind your work? The motive behind the work shouldn't be to butter up God or I'm going to get people to think I'm the greatest thing around. Wrong. What works, the right thing should be was I want to work for Jesus and produce good work so that person can find Jesus. The same love I have found they can find. That's the proper use of uh, works. So again, what makes works right and wrong is the motive behind the works. Good works are our entrance into the world and society around us. Okay, I'm going to say that again. Good works are our entrance into the world and society around us. There's got to be an entrance in there. And what the world is looking for, you hear it all the time, you know, about a food bank. You hear about over here with the place to give kids this and take care of that and, and these different types of, of things that you can get, charities and all this. And the world looks at that all the time. When a Christian does that, that's the first thing that helps to open up a door. But we're not here just to build a hospital. We are not here just to open up a clinic for somebody. We are here to introduce eternal life. What good is it to get a person well, but you don't give them eternal life? They're going to die one day and end up going to hell forever and forever. We need to use our good works as a means of getting Jesus Christ into their life and get them changed around. The Good Samaritan, a priest and a Levite, both came by good works. They were filled with good works, but they couldn't help anybody. And what happened was they taught religion, but when this man was in the road, they both had to pass by on the other side. Works will not save anybody. But the good Samaritan came along and he went to the man, bound up his wounds, poured in oil and wine, put him on his own beast, took him to an inn and told the innkeeper, take care of him. I'll pay for everything. And when I come back, if you spend anything more, I'll give it to you. That is the purpose of good works, to find people in the road that are just totally down and they have no hope in their life. And that's every person out there that doesn't know Jesus. But not to come along and say, well, I'll give you some food and then you go on your way. We are not a charity, okay? The things we do look like a charity on the outside, but the moment we give something, we have an ulterior motive to introduce them to the author of eternal life. You may not have a job. I'm going to give you some money, but you know what? I'm going to feed you and then tell you about the one that can cause you to have a job himself, get you born again into the kingdom of God, change your entire life around, get involved in your personal life, your family life, your children's life, your financial life, to where now you can become one that will sustain yourself and you can now lead other people to the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the purpose of good works. This is what the Good Samaritan did. So again, the Good Samaritan reached out in compassion. In other words, I've heard this before, don't hang a do not disturb sign around your neck. And act of the world like we don't need you anymore. Man, I'll tell you what, I look for what places to witness. I love to witness in airplanes. Talk to people about what I do for an occupation and help to win them to the Lord Jesus Christ. You know why I like to witness to people in airplanes? They can't go anywhere. They're trapped there for an hour or two hours and we can have a time to talk. I remember sitting down one time in a plane. The moment I sat down, I sat down to a young next to a young man. And the moment I sat down, the Holy Spirit gave me a word of knowledge and said, he's ready to receive me as Savior. I thought, wow, I mean, it was so clear. Uh, we talked as we were taxiing down the runway, getting ready for takeoff. I asked him what he did. He said he was a student. He asked me what I did. I told him I was a pastor of a church. He said, you are? And I said, yes. He started talking about that. I said, you're ready to receive Jesus, aren't you? And he goes, yes. And so the plane was already up in the air, headed toward the sky. And by the time that we got up and leveled off, this kid was born again, knew Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And I realized something. Somebody had already witnessed to him. Somebody had already watered it. Somebody had planted the seed. I just got to come along and see the increase. I'm the one that was the last one in that series of things that got to lead him to the Lord Jesus Christ. So other uses for works in the Word of God. Let's talk about this. In fact, we might be spending quite a bit of time on this and into the next broadcast. What does the Word of God have to say about us performing good works after we are born again? 
First of all, creation itself is called God's works. Why did God work? All creation around us is not there just because God said, I think I just want to do this. I think I want to show how smart I am and how, how creative I am. No, the reason why God put all those things out there, his creation around us, was to show people the plan of salvation. And so Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 10 says, You, Lord, in the beginning have laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of of your hands. We're told in chapter one of the book of Romans that all of this creation is out there to teach us about Jesus Christ, to teach us about the Godhead, to teach us about his eternal glory. All these things are put out there so that we can look out there even without a Bible and see creation. So what does God do with works? It's a means of witnessing. That's the same thing we do with our good works. We put them out there not to say, look how great I am or how smart I am. We put all these works out there so people will see Jesus Christ through our works. What does the universe teach? It teaches Jesus Christ as Savior. Romans 1.20, I'll quote that verse to you. The invisible things from him, that's God, from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are, that is, sinners without excuse. God said, you know what? We hear this all the time. Well, those nations don't have Bibles. They've never heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. Listen, God said, if there's no one there to preach to them, I'll preach to them through all of creation around them. And when they look at all those stars and see that, they'll say, you know what? There must be somebody that made all that. I'd like to know about him. All of a sudden, God has to move heaven, earth, and hell to get somebody over there to tell them about Jesus Christ. So we see that the creation is called the works of God and the purpose of God's works are to win people to the Lord Jesus Christ. Next of all, in the word of God, signs and wonders are called works and should be used to win the lost. Mark chapter 16, verses 15 through 18 tell us the Great Commission. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all that are out there. Those that are, will accept the Lord will be saved. Those who reject will be damned. And he said, these signs shall follow them that believe. They'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And the Lord went with them, working with them in signs and wonders and miracles. Acts chapter one and verse eight, you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit's come upon you to be my witnesses. And God opens up doors for us to produce good works. John chapter nine and verse four says, I must work the works of him that sent me. You know what works he was talking about? Healing the sick, casting out devils, performing miracles, changing lives, all these things. He said, I must work the works of him that sent me. We now stand in Jesus' place and God's telling us we must work the works of him that sent us. John 14 and verse 12 says this, the works that I do shall you do also and greater works shall you do. Notice that signs, wonders, and miracles are called works. Again, another term for works is witnessing. We witness not only by the words of our mouth, but by the deeds we have. Whatever you do in word, or indeed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father by him. So what's God left us in this earth to do? Deeds, and these deeds are also called acts. That's the purpose of the book of Acts, but what's another word for it? Good works. God has left us in this world for good works. What's the purpose of good works? Just like God created the universe to talk about Jesus, just like Jesus came and healed people to show people about Jesus as Lord and Savior, we produce good works for the same reason, to show people that Jesus Christ is Lord and they can accept him as Lord and Savior. I'll see you tomorrow. If you would like to become a partner with Bob Yandian, visit our website at bobyandian.com and click on Partnership or call us at 918 918- 250-2207. You can order resources, become a partner, or browse free articles and podcasts by visiting our website at bobyandian.com. You can also join our mailing list and receive weekly devotions and the latest ministry updates. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. We'll see you next time on Student of the Word with Bob Yandian.